Thank you, Proof. Um, we well with enough time. It's 9.22 now. Um, I would just now, we're going to, before we start with our presentations, um, I have mentioned a little bit of house rules. Uh, if you need to go, by all means. Um, please, let's respect the speakers when they are up front. Um, if you need to take a call, please step outside. And then also we give our presenters who have prepared for the, with this event um, in advance our undivided attention. And then also um, think of this today as, I'm not sure if you've <coughs> gone on Tinder dates or speed dating. See it um, in that way, our presenters will speak. We do not have a lot of time. So if there's time for, for one question, we'll allow it. If not, our next speakers will, be, will come up and do their presentation. We do have, uh, as you see on the program, at 11, we will have our tea break. So during tea break, if someone has presented and you have um, fallen for that presentation, please connect with your with the guy or the gentleman or lady who have presented. And then we will continue after tea up until lunchtime. It's a packed program. So, um, and remember, like the DVCC also said, this is also an extension of our online community of practice. So we are here face to face because that will never be able to replace um, teaching and learning and learning and teaching. The human connection is extremely important. That is why our university is blended. We are followed the, the blended approach. Okay, UNISA is the institution that is um, distance and they're also doing online so you don't always have to see them face to face and yes so without further ado we have our first two presenters ladies who will open this event with a bash uh, both are engaged and have been employed in the school of public health and we know School of Public Health has been at the forefront of online learning, distance learning for many, many years. Um, our two presenters are both, uh, work, as I said, in School of Public Health. Um, one of the, our one presenters, Yanda, she started as a student um, and a research assistant during her studies and now contributes to the program to the e-learning program by developing a range of administrative roles as well as e-learning support material. Her interest is in distance learning, student support, using technology to effectively support our students at a distance. And that is just what um, Prof. Lavak mentioned. And our second speaker, not second, uh, co-speaker, Corin, Mrs. Corin uh, Corolison. At School of Public Health, she's a senior student administrator for the NPH program. She coordinates her mini thesis and PhD admin administration. She assists with the winter and summer schools and provides support to a range of staff and students. I think it's also important, you may please come up ladies. Um, throughout what we do, any institution and our institution specifically, you cannot do anything if you do not have administration at the at the bottom of your your layer and I think administration is sometimes so undervalued in our institutions and in our departments and we should celebrate that and these two ladies have started and are in senior administrative roles so please welcome them Ziyanda and Karen give them a hand Colleagues, um, as Carolyn has said, I'm Zianda, and I'm with my colleague Karen. Um, we're both from the School of Public Health, and we are just here to share um, our experiences from moving from the email um, way of submitting assignments to using um, the e-tool assignments on eCamper. 
And, um, and also just to give you a background, um, so School of Public Health offers postgraduate programs um, to working health professionals from all over Africa and beyond. And before 2010, the school mainly relied on printed material which was couriered to students um, because that was the nature of the program. It was purely distance. Um, and, the, and the communication was just via email and telephonically. Um, then in 2011, the school started thinking of ways of engaging its students and then thought of using Google Groups um, for discussion and Google Sites as a repository for um, additional resources. Um, it was then in 2014 that the school started using a Canva um, and just piloted one module. It was well received by both the students and the conveners. It, then um, the following year, the school decided to ha um, have all its modules available on Ecamba, but some were more interactive than others. Some were just repository and some were using some of the interactive tools like the discussion forums and the blog. Um, and in all that time from um, when the program started to 2015, we were still, um, 2016 and 17, we were still using email um, for students to submit their assignments. And then this year we decided that we do everything on Ecamba. So we have a central um, teaching and learning platform where we do everything. So we also decided to then start using the assignment e-tool for student submission. So just um, to ask my colleague to explain how the previous system of submitting assignments worked, which was mainly e um, via email. Okay, thank you. Um, just to give an idea of our, the number of students that we work with, at the moment we have like 225 students. They're all postgraduate students, of which 34 are postgrad diploma, and 132 are master of public health students, and we have 52 PhDs. But the, the email assignment um, pertains mostly to the postgrad diploma and master students. Um, as Yanda indicated that our students are distance learners and they come from all over Africa so and beyond. So what happens is that they study, work, study at a distance, work in their countries full time and study at a distance. Um, okay, so this means because they are outside of South Africa and beyond the borders of, of, of South Africa, we, they have to submit the assignments in a particular way and the best way we could do it was via email. And if you recall in that time years ago, we all used group-wise and the mailboxes were constantly full. So we, and what happened was that the students would email their assignments to the individual administrators and not, uh, there wasn't a designated email address. So what happened is that we uh, started a designated email address. Um, you can see in this first slide, you can see it's called sofph-asn at uwc.ac.za. We started that designated email address for students to submit assignments to. I'm not sure if that's quite small in the far left on top of the screenshot, but in that, that's the email address that we used and students would have to name the assignments in a particular way. In other words, when they submit the assignments, the assignments would be, um, they call, it's the, the, with the file, the subject heading would say the surname, the initials, comma, the abbreviation of the module and the year that they, the kind of module, the assi kind of assignment, like assignment one final, 2017, and so that when administrators would go into the assignment uh, email, they would know exactly which assignments to collect. And, and in, on that email address, when students submit the assignments, the assignment file name would be exactly the same as the subject heading. As I said, this is so that students could, so that administrators could immediately go into the email address and pick up assignments. Um, once we received all the assignments, that screenshot is quite small on the left, but we would save all the assignments in specific folders on our hard drive. So for a year we'd have maybe health development and primary health key. And for each year that we've got assigned, get assignments, we'd put, attach a year to it. And in that year, there'd be subfolders, assignment one draft, assignment one final, assignment two draft, assignment two final, and all the assignments that come in would go into the respective folders. So once we receive the assignments, uh, we'd also download the class from Mass and actually tick to 
see which students handed in assignments and the date that they handed it in so that we could just check who didn't hand in. For those students who didn't hand in, we'd send them an email and say, uh, please advise us, we note we haven't received your assignment, can you please just note that we've been worried. So this is kind of a follow up to the students. Once we've collected all the assignments, we'd send the class list together with a bulk of the assignments to a module coordinator or a module convener or the marker if, you, if it's easy for you. Um, and they would mark the assignments and they would mark the assignments within a specific time and once this, the finished marking they'd send the bulk uh, of the assignments back to us but the feedback would be via tech changes so the students can see where, um, where they need to improve or whatever comments the marker makes. Um, thereafter, so once we receive the, all the feedback, we go back to our um, assignment class list and actually record all the marks, check the, the, the script um, that we got via email and record all the marks on the class list. Um, and after, once we've done um, that, we'd send all the feedback out immediately to the students because they're anxious and they're waiting for their feedback. Um, one of the advantages of using that old email system was that um, the administrators felt a sense of control and you knew exactly what was happening to which student, you knew which students were handing in the silence, which students weren't really interacting, weren't handing in, so you could you actually sort of mentally just kept track of students as well, as besides using the class list. Um, the, one of the disadvantages was that students did not use the UWC email address. They preferred to use their personal email address, which was quite problematic. Okay? Um, another disadvantage was that assignments got lost in the system because students who handed in late um, their, their assignments wouldn't have been sent off for marking as part of that bulk group. So that's how, um, when students send assignments late, those assignments would be lost in the system. And so when we did our monitoring, that's when we'd only see, but this one never, we were still waiting for feedback from this or, the, or this or that or the other student. Um, I am over to come and um, Ziana for the rest of the time. Okay, so because we had that, um, that whole um, back and forth interaction with the convener students, um, there was a bit of a time delay with the students receiving their uh, assignments, which also was one of the reasons why we then moved to Ikampa. And we had to implement it in two ways, for the students and for the conveners. So for the students, um, a formal letter communicating the changes from the email submission to Ikampa was sent to them. And those that <coughs> attended, um, and it was also, the, the letter was accompanied by guidelines and we linked it, so we adapted the CED guidelines for, for our purposes, and we also linked the students to the CED YouTube channel so that they could watch the videos. Um, and also the, the students that came to the summer school, which is optional, um, those got an introduction and orientation, a practical session, um, showing them and getting them around the assignment tool. Um, and for the conveners, for the lecturers, um, we held a two-hour session um, showing them how to set up the assignment with deadlines and the acceptance um, deadlines and also we showed them how to bulk download and to bulk upload and also how to release the assignments, um, the feedback. And for them we also produced um, handy guidelines. So just to share some of the lessons learned um, of the transition from email system to um, the Ecamba um, e-tool submission, we we really found the acceptance option useful in terms of accommodating um, extension request um, and also emphasizing um, file name was was not so much of a problem because Ecamba had a way of um, um, setting up the assignments. And we also had to take into account the system downtime. So um, Ecamba sometimes has site maintenance schedule, so we had to communicate with the CET team and also for them to produce us um, 
the scheduled um, times so that when we draft the due dates, um, they don't clash. Um, and because our students were used to um, submitting till 12 o'clock in the email, in the email or old way of submitting, we then had to alert them that um, the Canva now accepts until 11.55 and it was no longer till 12, so because that was also problematic. Um, and the great advantage is that it enforced um, the students to use their student email addresses because that's where they got the announcement in terms of feedback and everything. Um, and also we found creating groups um, was very useful in terms where modules have different, um, more than one markers. So that particular marker would go in and just download the students that are allocated to them without having to sift through all the, um, the student submissions. And also the bulk uploading and downloading, we found it very useful in terms of avoiding human mistakes where students get incorrect feedback, um, a, a student receiving someone else's feedback. That didn't happen if we used the bulk uploading and the downloading. Um, but generally, it's been a positive experience. It was well received by the students and the conveners and ourselves, the administrators. Um, and just also to note that um, it would have been really nice if if we if we now um, or oh, we're looking forward to the integration of the tenant in into the assignment e tool because it was it will also help us with um, picking up plagiarism because it's also becoming a problem at the school of public health. And um, just also to say thank you to Norina and the team.